Hi, I'm Frank Coluna Puma Podcast. You're listening to Teka Teka News. Balitang thinking, hindi breaking. In this episode... We were self-sufficient, I think, in the 60s. The population more than doubled in that time. And uh, yung mga gamit ng asin, dumadami. When you industrialize, dumadami yung mga example. Dati naman walang water filling station. Water filling stations, lahat marami na ngayon. Gumagamit ng asin yan. Let's talk about salt this time. Would you believe we also don't produce enough of it to feed our population? Remember the sugar fiasco? In August last year, the government imported 300,000 metric tons of sugar to prevent a shortage, only to take it back at the last minute. Guess what? That's not the only commodity we're forced to import. Ang nangyari, I checked our own records. As late as the 70s, we had about 5,000 hectares of salt farms. Mm-hmm. Today, we went through, you know, we also did our Google map search. Ganun. Nagyura mga nasa 2,000 hectares na lang. It's in decline. That's Gerard Konghun. He's president of the Philippine Association of Salt Industry Networks, or Phil Asin. He was being interviewed on the One News show, The Chiefs. And he says the country imports at least 550,000 metric tons of salt, mainly from Australia and China, each year. That's a whopping 93% of our salt needs coming from outside. How is it possible na napapaligiran tayo ng salt water, and yet we're importing so much? Hindi naman yung decline ng problema lang eh. Hindi tayo nagdadagdag. Sabi natin, ang dami nating coastline, dami nating dagat. Yes, hindi naman natin ginagamit. Hindi naman natin binubuksan yon para maging asinan siya. So, maraming ang dagat pero hindi siya makapag-asin kasi uh. hindi pa siya salt farm. It shouldn't be this way. Wikipedia says the Philippines actually has more than 36,000 kilometers of shoreline, which puts us in the top 10 in the world in terms of coastlines. At one point, salt farming was a thriving industry in the Philippines. But today, our salt exports only amounted to 213,000 U.S. dollars in 2021. In comparison, Singapore exported more than $6 million worth of salt in 2020, according to the trade data site OEC. Believe it or not, the total size of their shorelines is less than 1% of ours. Also, Gerard Kong Huno Phil Asin says we only have 2,000 hectares of salt farms. Just to put that number into perspective, we computed that uh, in our estimate sa association, ang kailangan ng bansa is 18,000 hectares of salt farm. It's quite a long way to go. So, kailangan natin buksan yon, and we need permits, we need government support. Salt manufacturers actually raised the prices in January and May based on the Department of Trade and Industries' suggested retail price. According to the DTI, the last time that happened was half a decade ago. The suggested retail price for 100 grams of iodized salt is 4 pesos and 50 cents. For a 250 gram pack, it costs anywhere from 9 pesos to 11.75. And a kilo of salt will set you back 29 pesos. Hindi lang pala sibuyas at asuka lang nagmamahala, no? And the thing is, even for the hectares of salt beds that remain, farmers aren't able to use them. Gerard says that's because of, you guessed it, red tape. Lalagay mo sa fund, kailangan mo yon ng fund. For that, kailangan mo ng access dun sa shoreline, yung baybayin natin, ah, yung coastline natin. Ah, ah. At yon kailangan ng government permits yon. And over the several decades, nagpatong-patong na yung mga batas na pahirap na ng pahirap to get access to that shoreline. There are so many kinds of permits that are required, and so an ordinary salt farmer cannot anymore go through that level of bureaucratic processes. There are also environmental reasons for the red tape. Yes, that means kailangan din ng environmental compliance certificate ng Department of Environment and Natural Resources para magtayo ng salt farm. Salt farm projects, the kind we need now, you have the shoreline, Pag nagrant yung use ng shoreline, you're not only applying for the shoreline. To make a salt farm project nowadays, you need to enclose a certain part beyond the shore. Once salt farms are constructed, they become part of the ecosystem. There are many, many salt farms around the world that have become wildlife sanctuaries. Yes. Wild birds, the seabirds. At a Senate hearing, lawmakers couldn't even pinpoint which government agency was responsible. 
Right now, the FDA under the Department of Health issues the permits for iodized salt products. But the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources also leads research and development initiatives for the salt industry. It also has the power to issue fish pond leases that are also used for salt making. Meron pang isa. The law also mandates the Department of Trade and Industry to assist local producers in upgrading their production technologies. Yun palang processes na yun, uh, that takes years to process certain applications. Oh, but We're pausing for a quick break now. When we return, why is there a law requiring all salt to be iodized? Teka teka, before we continue, sing it lang ako. Hi, I'm Trisha Aquino, Chief Content Officer at Puma Podcast and producer of our show Conservative Ako with sex and relationships therapist Doc Rica Cruz. It's the month of love. How are you celebrating? Is it by learning to love your partner more? Ipakita mo sa kanya kung saan ka ba nasasarapan, kung ano ba yung mga pwede niyang gawin sa'yo. You take the lead. Kahit na nakakaya, gawin mo yun para sa sarili mo. Or focusing on loving yourself. Napakalaga para sa ating lahat to know how we relate sa katawan natin. Anong klaseng respeto ang kailangan ng katawan? Anong klaseng pagtanggap sa mga ninanais nito at sa kasayahan nito? Ang dapat. Doc Rica Cruz and her guest experts are here to improve your relationships, whether it be with your lover or with yourself. Listen to Season 3 of Conservative Ako, our podcast on sex and female pleasure, wherever you get your podcasts. Pil Asin says the country goes to around 600,000 to 680,000 tons of salt per year. But as it is, we only produce 60,000 metric tons of that. Whereas countries like Vietnam produce 1.1 million metric tons. This is insanity on the part of the government. Ni require nyo na iodize. Tapos ang i-import nyo, hindi iodize. Eh, ba't ganun? Tama ba yun? Sino nagsabi na ipasa to ng Congress? That's Senator Cynthia Villar, who chairs the Senate Committee on Agriculture, Food, and Agrarian Reform. Republic Act 8172, or the Asin Law, requires all local producers to iodize the salt they produce for health reasons. Meaning, contraband yung Himalayan salt na nakikita mo sa Changi. But we know that not all salt supply is meant for human consumption. It's also used as fertilizer and water treatment, soap making, among other things. Sabi nga ni Gerard, The science says na salt has about 14,000 uses. It's thousands. Eating is just one, but within that food, marami ng gamit eh. Hindi, mm. siyang, hindi lang siya flavor. Mm. It's a preservative, yeah. ganun, and so on. So senators are pinning the blame on the 1995 law, which they say opened the door to competition from imports. And production dropped drastically after it was passed. The problem with the bill is they required everything to be iodized. Dapat yata, ginawa nyo noon, imbis na i-require the whole industry to iodize, nag na lang kayo ng iodization effort. Oo. Para hindi na matay yung industry. Kasi yung farmer talaga, salt maker sila. Iodization is manufacturing, di ba? Processing. So, it's really hard to ask the farmer to process. The answer to Senator Villar's question, by the way, is that iodine deficiency disorders were much more common back when the law was passed. So forcing salt to be iodized was meant to address malnutrition at the time. Problem was, not all salt needed to be iodized. According to study, 30% lang ang demand for iodized salt, 63% for other uses. Kasi para i amen namin yung law na sabihin namin na hindi lahat ia iodize only the demand for iodize and then they are free to produce now the Marcos administration has set up plans to help modernize the salt industry and boost local production of salt but Gerard says urgent help is also needed in the short term iodization came much later and meron din siyang effect sa industry pero the decline has been starting even before the industry was already not able to meet local demand as recently as the early 80s. Just as with sugar, rice, onions, fuel, and other commodities, decades of neglect are catching up to us now. 
It took a war in Ukraine and a global supply disruption to really make consumers feel the pain of our dependency on other countries. And the answer could be as simple as cutting red tape and making salt farms more efficient. Above all, Gerard says they need a champion in government. Ang totoo niyan, hindi po napansin ang industriya ng asin ng ating pamahalaan over three or four decades. And the salt industry is a small industry to begin with. And nung may mga nagbibigay na ng uh, hinaing na pansinin nyo naman kami. And that was today's episode of Teka Teka News. Again, I'm Franco Luna. This episode was edited by Mark Vasilian and produced by Kat Ventura. Special thanks to the One News show The Chiefs, from which all sound bites in this episode were taken. If you like this episode, share it with a friend or two. And of course, don't forget to follow Teka Teka News and Puma Podcast on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. Thanks for listening. <laughs>